<laughs> Hello! <laughs> Welcome to another video. Now last week, or two weeks ago, depending on when I post this, me and the fam, my family, went to Florida to experience the wonders of the beach, Universal Studios, and Disney World, where I got, at Harry Potter World, this butterbeer mug, which I was going to film, fill with uh, orange soda for the purpose of this video, for a gag, but I decided to drink it all before I started shooting. That's professionalism. Anyway, as we went from ride to ride and attraction to attraction, I couldn't help but marvel at all of the awesome illusions that were presented at these rides and the animatronics, the rides themselves, it was all super cool. And it reminded me a lot about some of my first times ever riding roller coasters. One of my favorite rides of all time is Universal Studios' Revenge of the Mummy. Not because it's based on a true American classic, or the fact that its protagonist is the great and terrible Brendan Fraser, long may he reign, but because there was one moment in the ride that filled me with, with terror, that horrified me. I was a little kid at the time. Now, at this one point in the ride, after you've encountered creepy animatronic mummies, projected beetles, and a ceiling of fire, you, the carts are brought into this room that looks a lot like the one you boarded when you first came in. There's an exit gate, there's a watchtower and everything. And so at first when I saw this as a kid, my mind went to, okay, the ride is over, we're about to get off and go to the nearest mummy-themed corn dog stand. <laughs> but then, inexplicably, that same animatronic mummy that I saw before busted through the watchtower I thought was real and proceeded to lurch the carts forward into a series of thradles Chittles and spirits. I don't know what that was. We hope you enjoyed your drive. Please remain seated and keep your arms and legs in front. Prepare to forfeit your souls. <laughs> it wasn't the sudden drop or the loops in the roller coaster that scared me. It was the fact that I thought that I was safe and I thought it was over, but I found out in the most terrifying way possible that I wasn't. So it now, today has led me on a search and a study of all of the awesome illusions that attractions use to create fear or to create wonder, to create this environment in the story. So without further ado, here's the secret science of theme park attractions. Wow. Let's start with one of the most beloved attractions of all time, Disney's The Haunted Mansion. Now we could spend an entire video, an entire series of videos on the many effects on this ride alone. From stretching portraits to dead brides, we're only going to highlight the most two famous effects in my opinion. Everyone who has ridden the ride knows the moment when the doom buggies, yes that's what they're called, enter into a balcony looking down on a dilapidated dining room. Suddenly, this empty room is filled with singing and dancing characters who, despite seeming very present, are completely transparent. They can't be there, but they can't not be there either. This famous illusion is not any advanced holographic projectors, but an effect called Pepper's Ghost. The original Pepper's Ghost optical illusion involves placing a large piece of glass at an angle between a brightly lit stage room, into which viewers look straight ahead, and a hidden room. The glass reflects the hidden room, kept dark, that holds a ghostly scene. In the dining room scene of the Haunted Mansion, what you're actually seeing is the reflection of animatronic figures that are directly beneath the balcony. The next effect comes after you've escaped from the axe-wielding bride, wedding days can be stressful, to a graveyard filled with animated corpses singing, dancing, and drinking. In this graveyard are five marble busts that are also singing but there's something different about these busts than the rest. These ones don't have the same robotic face movements as the other ones do. When these guys sing, their face movements are shockingly realistic, despite not being attached to human bodies. This illusion is also very simple. The marble busts are created without faces, and a video of someone singing is projected onto the blank face to create the illusion of a marble bust with a human face. So I was curious to see how practical and affordable this effect could be on a low-level budget. So, I decided to splurge. I went all out, haters. I bought myself a styrofoam head, that's right. And I'm not ashamed about it. 
and I was curious to see what would happen if you projected the same faces from the Haunted Mansion onto a styrofoam head to see if it creates the same projected face illusion. So, let's give it a shot. When the crypt doors creak and the tombstones quake, spooks come out for a swing and wake. Happy haunts materialize and begin to vocalize. Grim, grim ghosts come out to socialize. Now don't close your eyes and don't try to hide. Or a silly spook, they uh, sit by you. You can pretty clearly tell that it's a non generic face being projected onto a very generic they face, but not bad. Hello. So you can actually uh, make these things for pretty cheap if you want to. So this Halloween, if you want to have a creepy singing bust of your own face, all you have to do is buy a foam bust from Target or Walmart, it's about four to eight dollars, and also record yourself doing some fancy little thing like I'm doing right now. Huh. And then if you have a spare projector lying around, which, let's face it, you do, of course. then you just have to pop your face on there and it'll be good. Uh, dang, we look good. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Another ride we went to Disney was the equally creepy Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. If you have never been on this ride, it is essentially a drop tower that lifts you 13 stories in the air and lets you experience the beautiful feeling of free fall as it plummets to the ground. Another key difference between the Tower of Terror and other drop towers is it taps into a fear everyone has had at one point when they stepped into an elevator. What happens if it falls? It's also unpredictable. I mean, if I go to Pirates of the Caribbean three times, I'm gonna see the same thing three times. You know, Pirates just messing around, just Johnny Depp making a whoop, just making a big old mess. But in the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, it's actually random each time you ride. The sequence of exactly when and how fast you drop is different each time you ride. Well, not every time, there's four randomized presets, so there's four different ways that you can drop, but it's randomly chosen each time you ride. So you always start by going to the very top. You may drop a little bit, then it'll bring you back up, and then you'll drop a bit again. And you do that for what feels about a, a four, or four times an eternity, until eventually there's this one big drop. But before the death plummet in the elevator, you're shown down a long hallway to the hotel, where out of nowhere, mysterious figures appear in an electric flash. Their movements are too human-like to be animatronic, but just like before, they're transparent, so they can't really be there. This uses the same illusion as the Haunted Mansion dining room scene, but instead of reflecting the image of robots, the glass reflects a computer projection. Afterwards, the hallway goes dark and lights hidden around the room make it appear as if you are now in space. The image that was displaying the ghosts now projects stars in the middle of the hallway, adding more to the 3D illusion. Moving on to the most impressive and my personal favorite set of attractions I have ever witnessed. And believe me, I, I actually haven't witnessed a lot. The Wizarding World of Harry Potter. Before we even get into any of the rides, the whole park is filled with interactive and amazing effects. From animatronic AI goblins, flying broomsticks, acrobatic rats, talking mirrors, moving pictures, and so much more, this whole place is indeed quite magical, dare I say. Also hidden throughout the park are interactive displays you can trigger with a special wand with a retro reflector tip. At each display are four hidden infrared cameras that track the end of the wand. If you do the right pattern, you can cause an animation in the displays. And guess what? You can purchase these wands for the low, low price of $50. That's right, $50. Come on, ladies and gents. There's, it's, you can't put a price in your childhood's dreams. Come on, parents, don't worry about it. It's your, it's your kid's imagination. Clearly Universal spared no expense when creating the park and expected the guests to spare no expense when enjoying it. Really spectacular, spared no expense, I spared no expense, I spared no, 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 no expense. Anyway, now on to the actual ride. The two main rides of the Wizarding World of the Harry Potter are the Escape from Gringotts ride and the Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey ride, or the Hogwarts one. They both involve a lot of the same elements though. They both have you strapped into a moving death machine, well actually these rides aren't that scary, as you zoom to iconic scenes in the movies. 
And in the Hogwarts ride, you actually interact with animatronic spiders, Dementors, dragons, and so much more. An element in these practical effects, though, is occasionally your cart will move into a room where a projected 3D scene takes place in front of you. But it's different from looking at a regular TV screen, though. In the Gringotts ride, you wear special glasses with polarized lenses. That's a, a 3D glass for you illiterates. To make the scenes look like they're actually in front of you. This is a m more modern technique used in theme park attractions like the Simpsons ride, Shrek, Shrek 4D, the, the Star Wars one, and the true king of any attraction on this planet Earth, the Jimmy Kimmel ride at Universal Studios. Hallowed be its name. In the Hogwarts ride, instead of being displayed on a flat screen, there are displayed on a curved surface that, when you're placed in the middle, look like it's really in front of you. Well, it is in front of you, but it looks like you're in the scene. These curved screens, along with the movement of the seats interspersed with actual 3D scenes and animatronics, create a beautiful experience I will remember for a long, long time. Ow. And to think, whew. That was only a drop in the bucket of all the awesome illusions and techniques that attractions use to fool their guests. Thank you so much for watching. Please post a comment down below if there's things that you thought of I didn't mention or if the other rides that you've been on that were cool that maybe I should take a look at in the future. You guys are great. Keep it real. And, and this is my outro, I guess. <laughs>